Uh, well, Australia's relationship with Indonesia on this climate change issue is located very firmly in the broader uh, the, the broader relationship, the, our bilateral relationship with Indonesia is one of Australia's most important. Our aid budget uh, spent in Indonesia is our largest, but we have a relationship that covers, you know, absolutely everything that you'd expect neighbours to share an interest in. And climate change has a very significant um, flavour on both sides of the um, on both sides of the water. Um, and the work that we've focused on here relates to. Uh, red projects um, one of which is a, a demonstration project we call it and it's for peat rehydration in Kalimantan and in some ways it's the guinea pig of red projects because it's it's thrown up a series of quite thorny issues mm. um, and so when you say what's worked well and what hasn't worked well we've been very much learning as we go and it throws up issues that won't surprise you at all they're very uh, common in Asia generally and in Southeast Asia and they're things like land tenure and um, the governance issues and how the levels of government relate to each other federal right down to the local level so finding ways to um, to make all of that fit together and work in a way that's attractive to the outside world it's it's um it's a you know it's it takes time mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, Pat Contora discovered when he was working on Aceh was the very first thing that had to be done was the mapping. You can't discuss land or anything in relation to land or property or investment in property without knowing who owns it and what sort of certainty they've got. And although it's not very sexy to talk about maps or mapping, as a first step in almost any one of these projects in this part of the world, it's absolutely crucial. And so working through those issues for Kalimantan and again in our second project that we're looking at in Jambi is very important. And we're really hoping that once we've established these steps in this kind of work, it will be able to be generalised more broadly and be very, very sort of useful work in progress lessons for Indonesia more broadly on red. Now that's the that's the tricky, murky end of it. There is something that is much clearer and, and much more straightforwardly um, easy to do and that's the national accounting, um, that's the land accounting. Now Australia has loads of land and loads of accountants mm -hmm. so it's very very easy for us to, <laughs> for us to uh, transfer that particular expertise uh, to Indonesia and we're very glad that we've been able to do that and that's an extraordinarily happy mutual relationship. Mm -hmm. Our people who do the national land accounting in Australia and it's a um, a system that they love, they're mad about. Mm -hmm. um, they're so glad to be able to come and work with people in Indonesia and help them do that. And just as, uh, as the mapping is very important for the issues relating to land, uh, carbon accounting and national land accounting systems are very important when it comes to measuring carbon because no company in its right mind uh, wants to go into a relationship where they can't be certain what the baselines are and what the changes in the measurements are. So this is an absolutely fundamental part of getting the sort of the um, well you know the governance right mm -hmm. is everybody doing what they said they'd do you yeah. know you need to be able to answer that that question unambiguously mm -hmm. and in the positive yeah. so I think that that the good news is that that is very straightforward the Indonesian our counterparts love it it's going very well if you look for the next four or five years mm -hmm. is it more of the same or are there some some new areas that are opening up or some uh, things that were unexpected that, that need to be explored more well we're on the lookout um, we, we've got this second project that we're looking at in Jambi which is a different sort of project and you know, we're just at the early phases of that but as as this begins to work well um, we will we'll definitely be looking for more of these projects and there's enormous interest globally mm -hmm. in working with Indonesia because the forests are here the president is willing. I mean, that's one of the really important things in uh, for a foreign government looking to do make an investment in a red project is you know how, what's the commitment like at the top level mm -hmm. and does that commitment go down and have you got key people in key places who'll help you get over the humps and uh, president uh, Udiono is is you know really very very good on all of this mm -hmm. and the sorts of comments he was making this morning you know they go to a sort of authenticity um, in Indonesia's commitment to this that is the basis on which we're all working Mm -hmm. As we now move into to Durban, we've, yeah. passed, we've got the Cancun agreements which sort of mm -hmm. reinforce what was agreed in, in Copenhagen mm -hmm. and so RED is, is established. Where can we expect the negotiations to go and, and, and you know, what would Australia consider a reasonable outcome in the area of RED from, from Durban and what's going to have to be put off to, to, mm -hmm. to further negotiations? 
Look, you, it's, it's, a, it's a loser's game predicting negotiations mm -hmm. COPs. Um, but what I can easily say is that we were very, very pleased with the outcomes from Cancun. We had those building blocks in place. It gave something to everybody, something to developed countries, something to developing countries, and something to the atmosphere, which was red, mm -hmm. you know, and that was a, that was a wonderful thing. Um, we're going to be uh, hard up against it in Durban to make absolutely sure that we can take all of those things forward. Mm -hmm. the, there are unresolved issues um, that, that were not able to be agreed upon last year and it's very unlikely that there'll be able to be much progress on them. But we don't want the things that we can't uh, we can't cooperate on and we can't mutually agree on globally mm -hmm. to hold these other things hostage. Yeah. And so what we're hoping to do on RED is just keep on taking it mm -hmm. that step further. It's been a very, you know, it's been a really wonderful um, story in, in the negotiations generally that countries have been able to carve out this area where there really is the prospect of significant emissions reductions mm -hmm. and uh, cut across all the ideological lines to get to work on it. Yep. And that, I'm not being a Pollyanna about this, There's, I'm not naive, it is very tricky, but it's, it does offer a very prospective emissions reduction outcome and it does look at all these questions that people are talking about today, you know, enhanced um, agricultural output on current lands, um, food security, um, growth that is decoupled from emissions growth, yep. economic growth decoupled from emissions growth, and a proper way of properly accommodating the people whose livelihoods mm -hmm. and indigenous cultures are located in forests. So it really, in some ways, red is the demonstration to the negotiation more broadly. Mm -hmm. It has markets, it has many stakeholders, it has the prospect of great emissions reduction, and it needs things like the transparency and um, a, a certain amount of legal framework framework to make it work. So in a way, if we can get things working in red, that offers us hope more broadly for a, you know, ultimately a, 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 some kind of a global agreement. Do you, do you th so I mean, one of the pitfalls in, in the CDM was things were a bit over-regulated. You know, the, the really strong uh, language on what to do for additionality, mm -hmm. on, on uh, different ways for carbon accounting and all that. It, many people felt that the land use change of forestry never went forward in the CDM because yeah. It was just so tied down by, by yeah. over-regulation. Uh, Can we avoid that with, with what's going to come Look, out of red? Um, I think we have to. I mean, from Australia's point of view, the land loose, the, the Lulu CF, as we call it, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. take account of the world as it is in Australia. Mm -hmm. And we are very keen to see, um, you know, something that is more reflective of uh, our own emissions profile um, in terms of the land going forward in Australia. And so we're open to, you know, uh, we're open to making that more inclusive, not less inclusive. And I would be very, very um, loath to find ourselves in a similar situation in red. Mm -hmm. So you know, we guard against that at all times. Okay. Good. Um, C4 as a research institute, we're always interested in where we fit in and, and where we can contribute, you know, and we, we have a lot of support from the Australian government. Um, what can what can research? What do you think research can do to, to help strengthen this? Where, where are some of the, the key gaps that research needs to to perhaps provide result, uh, information in the next uh, 12 to 18 months? And, and you know, if we're looking out, you know, over the time horizon of five or 10 years, where are the key areas that you think research can can contribute to? ensuring success or, or increasing the probability of success? That's a tricky question. I think the more, we, the more sort of detail we can get on how best to use land, and uh, including that forests and agriculture, um, to do sort of carbon smart farming and retain the value of the forests, I think that's, I think that in, in a broad spectrum is the, is the way to go. The other thing I value in researchers and scientists um, is an ability to tell the story simply and well. Mm -hmm. I think this is quite a rare quality. Scientists are, are often, I find, um, quite introverted and very interested in their own field. And when one of them breaks out of that and, and tells the story well, it's just the most wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the more we hear from scientists and researchers on what's driving them and what they're doing, what they're doing in, 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 a, in a wonderful narrative. Mm -hmm. That helps so much. You have no idea how effective it is right. when, you get a, <laughs> when you get a talking scientist. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so find some of them for okay. me. Okay, yeah, and, and get them to, to speak up. <laughs> yes. Great.